Hello, my name is Pamela Powers Hanley and I'm the Social Media Editor for the American Journal of Medicine. I'm here today with our Editor-in-Chief, Dr. Joseph Alpert, and we're going to talk about atrial fibrillation and anticoagulation. Yes, Pam, atrial fibrillation is really a growth industry in that 10% of people over the age of 80 have atrial fibrillation, uh, and of course that segment of the population is rapidly increasing in size. Usually, as long as you control the heart rate, most patients with atrial fib do just fine. But there's one big risk, and that is when the patients are in atrial fib, small blood clots can form within the left atrium. If they get out, they can go to the brain and cause a very, very nasty disabling stroke. And of course, in that population, stroke is the number one public enemy. So, but there's fortunately a very good treatment, uh, and that's anticoagulation blood thinners. Here's the problem though, that population is also an increased risk for bleeding. So there's always a weighing of the two benefit versus the risk when you treat a patient with anticoagulants. In general, almost all patients over the age of 80 do better if they get anticoagulated as opposed to not. Well, this study looked at patients uh, in a big atrial fib registry, and they particularly examined the patients who were taking anticoagulants. And to no one's surprise, it turns out it's the patients that have multiple other medical problems that are very elderly and frail, where the doctors are really very afraid of bleeding. But in fact, when the calculations were done as to the risk of bleeding versus the risk of stroke, most of these patients still should have been anticoagulated because there was more benefit than harm potential there. Great explanation. Could you give us an idea of what the take-home points are for clinical physicians? So the take-home message for physicians here, and it's one that's been repeated many times over recent years, is think carefully and discuss it carefully with the patients why, uh, when they're high risk for stroke, they ought to be on anticoagulants, even if they're at increased risk for bleeding. And these days where we have new anticoagulants where we can give lower doses, that's often an, a convenient compromise. Give the patient lower doses of one of the new anticoagulants, assuming that they don't have a huge copay that they have to manage uh, each month, um, and uh, uh, point out to them why it's important for them to be anticoagulated. Most older patients quickly understand when they hear about the risk of stroke, they're ready to, uh, to understand why they, they need to take this medicine. So thank you very much everyone for watching us today and please follow us on our Facebook and uh, page and, and our Twitter account and our blog and, and our website. We have a lot of wonderful information and we hope you're following along with us. Goodbye.